Hello, everyone. My name is Sebastian Denisio, and I'm the Director of Communications here at Blue Ridge Tech Incorporated. Now, because we live in a world where the workplace has changed substantially over the past couple of years, such as employees varying in age, background, race, ethnicity, and abilities, leaders in the workforce are prioritizing factors such as diversity and inclusion. As a result, today we'll be discussing the importance of communication across different cultures, also known as intercultural communication. Did you know, back in the 1960s when Pepsi first moved into the China market, their slogan, come alive, you're in the Pepsi generation, was accidentally mistranslated into the phrase, Pepsi brings your ancestors back from the grave. Although it was a bold promise for sure, Pepsi's mistake was the prime example of the importance of understanding other cultures to ensure intended goals were met successfully. Clearly, this was not the case. Our learning objectives include the advantages of intercultural communication, the difference between high context and low context cultures, and finally, the how the perception of time differs across cultures as well. Advantages of intercultural communication include the removal of cultural barriers, which in turn allows for people to learn more about themselves, enhance productivity and increase efficiency within an organization, competitive advantages among rivals, and consequently, long-term success since the businesses that prosper in the future are those that can make use of the advantages of the global economy. Moving along, high context cultures rely heavily on implicit communication, meaning that context and relationships are more important than actual words. As a result, they rely on nonverbal cues and thus require very little explanation. High context cultures also value collective needs and ultimately foster long lasting relationships as a result. Examples of high context cultures include Japanese, Korean, Russian, and Italian. Low context cultures, on the other hand, rely on explicit communication, meaning the communication is more direct and confrontational. Low context cultures foster short-term relationships as a result. They also value individual needs rather than collective ones and place a great deal of importance when it comes to an individual's privacy. Examples of low context cultures include Australian, Dutch, English, Scandinavian, and German. Time across cultures. Now, when it comes to the perception of time across cultures, it is important to note that high context cultures utilize a polychronic perception of time, whereas low context cultures utilize a monochronic perception of time. To elaborate, in high context cultures, time is fluid. Tasks are achieved when possible, and people tend to focus on several tasks at once. In low context cultures, on the other hand, time is sequential meaning it can be saved, spent, and so on. Additionally, tasks adhere to strict deadlines and people tend to focus on one task at a time. In conclusion, intercultural communication skills are extremely valuable. Not only do they allow for us to expand the type of people we work with, but they also allow for us to adapt to new work environments, also enhancing our cultural awareness and knowledge. There are my sources. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.